How are exchange rates determined? This is one of the most fundamental and complex questions in all of economics. And as of today, it has not yet been fully solved. That being said, economists have a pretty good understanding of the basic variables that determine the exchange rate, inflation and interest rates. The biggest problems are that they do not know which of these variables is dominant for each country and at each point in time, and how they interact with each other and the exchange rate. While that may be, to understand whether exchange rates will go up or down, you will still need to understand the basic economics of exchange rates. Hey, I'm Yuri, and in this video I'm going to tell you all about exchange rates, so that by the end of it you will not only understand the basic variables that determine exchange rates, but also why it is still so difficult to predict exchange rate movements. Alright, let's start with the basics. The exchange rate is the price of one currency expressed in that of another currency. This means that it can be expressed in two ways. For example, you can say that since a South African rand gets you 0.056 euro, the rand over euro exchange rate is 0.056. Or you can say that since one euro gets you 17.88 rands, the euro over rand exchange rate is 17.88. Luckily, there is a standard for this, and that is that people should express the exchange rate such that it indicates how much foreign currency they can buy with their home currency. To avoid confusion in this video, I will always talk about the price of a currency and currency appreciation if the price of a currency goes up compared to other currencies and about currency depreciation if the price of a currency goes down compared to other currencies. So with the basics out of the way, how is the exchange rate between two currencies determined? The simple answer is that it is determined by supply and demand on foreign exchange markets. Foreign exchange markets are decentralized, meaning that currencies are exchanged all over the world on electronic exchanges and via market makers. These markets are largely hidden from consumers and businesses since they typically go to their bank, which will then visit the foreign exchange market for them. But even though these markets are somewhat hidden, prices are determined, like in all other markets, by supply and demand. If demand for a currency goes up, the price of that currency will go up. So you'll have to use less of one currency to obtain other currencies. In other words, that currency appreciates. On the other hand, if there's more supply of a currency, then the price of that currency will go down, meaning that the currency will depreciate. So there you have it. Exchange rates are determined by supply and demand. Easy, but also kind of useless, since that leaves us with the question, what determines supply and demand for currencies? On this, economists agree that a big chunk of currency supply and demand comes from traders trying to make a buck from differences in prices between countries. The practice of trying to make a quick buck from price differences is formerly known as arbitrage, and traders who participate in it are known as arbitrageurs. Now you might ask, how can some trader and possibly you, profit from price differences between countries. This is where the two most prominent theories of the exchange rate come in. You see, a currency is a tricky thing to price because it is money. And money has three major functions. It is a medium of exchange, a unit of account and a store of value. Now the first major theory of what determines the exchange rate focuses on the first two aspects, medium of exchange and unit of account. This theory is known as the purchasing power parity theory. The main idea of purchasing power parity is that prices in two countries should roughly be the same. If they are not, that means that arbitrageurs can come in and make a bit of quick and easy money. For example, say that the price of the euro is one to one with the dollar. Now you notice that on average prices in the United States are only 80% of what they are in Europe. Being a savvy trader, you might try to buy as many goods as possible from Amazon in the US and sell them in Europe at prices which are up to 20% higher and make a neat profit. When this happens, Europeans will start buying goods from you and they will need dollars to do so. So their bank will enter the foreign exchange market, offer euros and obtain dollars to pay for the goods. 
This drives the price of the euro down, and trying to buy dollars will drive its price up. Therefore, the euro will depreciate and the dollar will appreciate until this arbitrage opportunity is gone. Now, in practice, there's only limited scientific evidence to back up this theory, especially when it comes to monthly exchange rate fluctuations. That being said, if there is hyperinflation in one country, there is considerable evidence that the exchange rate will adjust accordingly. Also, in the long run, there is some evidence that the exchange rate adjusts to offset inflation. But why doesn't purchasing power predict exchange rates completely? Some of the reasons are that arbitrage through trade is not easy. There are trade barriers between countries and not all goods can be traded and most services can certainly not be traded. So while economists agree that inflation and trade in goods and services are important variables in foreign exchange markets, a complementary theory was needed. The second major theory of what determines the exchange rate focuses on the last aspect of money, and that is its role as a store of value. After all, exactly what type of money is traded in foreign exchange markets? Are these notes and coins? No, they are bank deposits, and bank deposits typically will earn you a little bit of interest. But again, there are a lot of complications. For example, you could also buy a currency and use that to invest in something else than a bank deposit. For example, the local stock or housing market, here you can perhaps earn a higher dividend or rent than you could at home. Or to make it even trickier, you could earn a higher return if there is a house price boom there, or you could profit from the rupiah currency appreciation itself. Wow. That became much more complicated super quickly. As you can see, these two theories are not complete. Nevertheless, I consider them as building blocks that help me understand exchange rate movements. Indeed, the consensus seems to be among economists that in one way or another, interest rates and other financial returns can help explain exchange rate movements in the short term. Now, even then you might think, okay, okay, two basic theories. I got this, interest rates for the short term and inflation for the long term. But before you think about opening that foreign exchange trading account, I just want to point out that in these markets, you will not be the only one trying to predict the exchange rate. Besides arbitrageurs, a lot of supply and demand in foreign exchange markets comes from speculators who are trying to guess what arbitrageurs are going to do. After all, if you can predict interest rate differentials or inflation changes, you might be able to buy the currency right before the arbitrageurs come in and make a quick buck by selling to them in the process. But because lots of people are already doing this, the exchange rate likely already reflects the expectations of other traders about future interest rates and inflation in both countries. So let's do a quick recap. The exchange rate is the price of two currencies. It can be expressed in two ways, but the most common one is to divide your home currency by the foreign currency. The easiest way to avoid confusion when talking about exchange rates is simply to mention if a currency appreciated or depreciated. Exchange rate movements are driven by supply and demand, which is in turn determined by the actions of arbitrageurs and speculators. Arbitrageurs will profit from inflation and interest rate differences between countries. However, because of speculators, a lot of expectations about these variables are likely already reflected in the exchange rate. So if you want to enter this market, you'd better be good. In spite of that bleak message, I still think there's an opportunity here to come up with new exchange rate theories because there's really still a lot unknown about the exchange rate. For example, you now know that inflation and interest rate differentials influence exchange rates. But did you know that the exchange rate also influences inflation and interest rates? Also, while currency traders are definitely smart, they are still human. That means that they have a lot of biases that you might be able to exploit if you study behavioral finance. For all of that and more, consider subscribing to the Money & Macro YouTube channel because that is what we're all about here.